back for this next video we'll go ahead and look at how to create a payload and where to find payload information overall so once you log in to mythic you'll be brought to the standard mythic homepage. if we look up here in the global configurations payload types this is where you'll find all the different payload types that exist c2 profiles all the different c2 profiles that are associated with them so we'll look here initially at the payload types and we can see here there's a bunch of different types already um, in there for you for you to create with some pieces of basic information presented to you now so what kinds of operating systems they support so for example the atfel agent only supports mac os whereas the poseidon agent is both linux and mac os so you can see some information here you can see who created it by their twitter twitter handle so if you want to reach out and ask them questions feel free to do so and a basic piece of information about kind of what it is that the payload is doing. Is there a specific language that it's using? Is there a specific feature about it? Just a little snippet there to give you some sort of idea of which agent you might want to select. Now, if you look over here on the right, you'll see that there's a number of commands. So you can see how many different commands each agent actually supports. And if you want to dig a little bit deeper, there's a view components dropdown where you can view all the different commands. So you can see, okay, for this add user command, Here's a description on it. Here's how you might use it. What version is it? All the different parameters that are needed. Are they required? Attack mappings, all this sort of stuff is easily viewable right here in the UI. And you can do this for any sort of command that's here. Additionally, you can go through and look at parameters. So these parameters are specifically build parameters. So for example, let's go over here to Atlas. Atlas takes in a couple of build parameters such as if you want to build for .NET 3.5, 4.0, what kind of architecture, all this sort of stuff that kind of comes along with a compiled agent versus AppFell's just static um, JavaScript for automation agent. So you can see all this sort of information here. You can see if those parameters are required, all that sort of standard information. Now, if you want to get a little bit more in-depth in information here, instead of trying to clutter the UI with all this data, all this is put off in a separate Docker container dedicated just to documentation. So you can click here. If you ever see these little blue document icons, that's what this is referring to, view documentation. It'll open up a new tab and bring you directly to either that C2 profile or that payload types documentation page. So you can see here just within agents, there's the Atfel, Atlas, Leviathan, Poseidon, all these different agents are here. And they all have this same general breakdown. There's some information about it, some features that you might want to kind of take note about, anything that's important about it, who created it, and as well the important ones I think are these next four pages. So there's offset considerations. What do you need to know about that payload? Is it spawning and injecting into processes? Is it doing pop-ups? Is it running shell commands? Like what is going on with the payload that you need to know about from an offset perspective? You can access all the different commands here. So if you look at some sort of command, maybe download, like what is it doing? How do you run it? Some of these that are take more parameters, you can see all the different parameter types they take. You can even see, um, you know, if there's detailed summary of maybe something you need to know about how the parameters work, all that information is captured for you there. If you want to do development, so maybe you want to add a new command, maybe you want to, you know, modify something, each of these have a development component. So you can see what exactly you need to modify, what structure you need to hit, what kind of is available to you how you want to modify or add C2 profiles, all this sort of information, as well as all the different C2 profiles that it supports and if there's anything different about it. So for example here, the Atfel agent using JavaScript for automation right now can't connect to a self-signed cert due to Apple's limitations in the APIs that, it, that it's using. So that's called out here as a warning, as a note about using this specific C2 profile with this agent. Otherwise, you can go through and we can look at all the different C2 specific information. So I'll talk about that in a second. But you can see all of that information here for all these different payloads. So it's really handy to come to this page and view that documentation if you're curious about how something works. So these are just different payloads, but they have to talk somehow. So all the different C2 profiles are again in their own page. And something to note here, you'll see these little green lights. These green lights indicated that the corresponding payloads Docker container is up. Remember, everything in Mythic is in Docker containers. So each of these payloads have their own Docker container that's set up and running. So if this goes to red, that means that there hasn't been a heartbeat from that Docker container in over 30 seconds. So there's something to look in there, something to troubleshoot. 
So if we look at C2 profiles, again, you'll notice that same style. There's a name, there's information here, in this case, not what operating system is supported, but what agents support it. So you can see here, for example, like WebSocket, only the Poseidon agent speaks the WebSocket language. Whereas if we look at standard HTTP, Atlas, Poseidon, and Atfel all speak this sort of uh, dialogue here in the HTTP profile. You can see some information about it, whether you're doing uh, manipulation, whether you're just doing WebSocket, that sort of information. Uh, again, you'll see here this blue icon for documentation. So we can click that here again, open up into the documentation container, see information about it. In the case of C2 profiles, you'll also get these mermaid diagrams that are showing the flow of how things actually connect. So it's super helpful as you're going through and maybe trying to troubleshoot some connection issue between your agent actually kind of calling home. You can see information about all the different configuration options that go into the C2 profile itself. You can see some example debug messages to know that things are up and going. See information about all the different C2 profile parameters, offset considerations, all this sort of stuff is captured here as well. Um, one thing to note about these C2 profiles, these are Docker containers and every one of these Docker containers has a server file that is the actual server itself for the C2 profile that handles the connections coming in from an agent and forwarding them off to the actual mythic server. So you can see right now, these all say start internal server. None of these profiles are currently running. They're waiting for you to configure them to then start them. So what you can do is, for example, here with the HTTP, you can say configure and you're brought up with a dialogue for editing any of these parameters. Editing it here and clicking update will update and send that configuration back down to the Docker container. So it's then updated within there. And you can see here, you know, if there's specific server headers we want to send back with our requests, a specific port we want to listen on to, if we want to get debug output or not. Um, again, here, if you upload uh, certs, you can use SSL with this container. By default, it's just using plain text HTTP. Uh, now, if we actually want to start it, remember the container is running because we have green here, but the server inside of it is not running yet. So we'll click start internal server. See, we get a task submitted to that container. And now we get information about what actually happened. So we can see here that our server started, it's running, debugging statements are enabled, and we can see here that we are running on port 80. Awesome. And we're not using SSL, which is as we expect. So now let's actually go through and create a payload. So whenever we want to create a payload, it's up here in Create Components. You can see here, Create a Payload. First thing you want to do is select what target operating system you're going after. For this demo, to do something pretty quick, we're just going to go ahead and target Linux and run it locally. So we'll say here our target is Linux. Whenever you select C2 profiles, you'll automatically already be filtered down to only C2 profiles with agents that support running on the Linux operating system. So in this case, only the Poseidon agent. And you'll see one of these options for each of the different C2 profiles that we could select. Let's go ahead and select HTTP since we just started that profile. Now you'll see here all the different parameters that are available. You can see which ones are required, like which host we'll call back to. And you can see, uh, for example, if you need to perform key exchange to do an encrypted key exchange, are you gonna do a static AES key? Or are you going to do plain text? All this is up to you. By default, it's configured to do the highest supported um, OPSEC safe. So you'll have an AES key and doing key exchange. So we can see here for now, we'll go ahead and update this to point back to our local self at the Docker container. So we'll replace this with HTTP. And you can see here the moment that this is no longer a proper domain. So HTTP or HTTPS colon slash slash and then something this automatically gets replaced and notified bad value. Like this is not meeting up to spec of what you need to supply. So we can do HTTP colon slash slash 7.0.0.1. And now you can see that that went away. You can update the callback interval jitter. By default, the kill date will be set to one year in the future, you can see 2021, but you can set this to any date that you want simply by either modifying it here or browsing in here and selecting the date. We'll go ahead and click next because we only want to include that C2 profile. Again, uh, what payload do we want to select? So this is the Poseidon one. You're doing this here because in the previous section, maybe for if we had selected Mac, you'd have both the option for Poseidon or Atfel. 
the C2 profile is the same. So then you filter it down once more to which specific agent you're looking at. So in this case, Poseidon. Poseidon has some build parameters for that we need to specify. We're not gonna be doing any sort of shared object libraries or dilibs or anything like that. So just default here is fine. The target operating system is we wanna build for Linux. The name doesn't matter. This is just what it will be downloaded as. And then what sort of description we wanna set. The description that you set here is the one that's automatically populated for callbacks. So we can go ahead and set something like my test payload, click next. Here you'll select all the different commands that you want to include in the payload itself. Not every payload type supports the option for you to only bake in certain commands. Poseidon in this case doesn't, so it will automatically select everything every time and you don't have an option otherwise. So you click create. You can see here it builds an agent stub and sends it off to the container to get built. And now we can see that our agent is successfully built. Awesome. You can either download it here, you can see the UUID. We can also go to our operational views, created payloads, and we can see information about the payloads that we create. So we can see what the name of the file is. This is the build status. If this was a failure, you'd see this being red. If it's in progress, you'll see this being like a little spinny circle. The description that we set, who created it, what type of payload it is, when it happened, all that sort of standard information. We can see a lot more stuff here in the payload actions. We can rename the file if we want for whenever we download it as a different file name. We can edit this description that we set. By default, if you have a webhook set for your operations, and this is something I'll talk in another video, you'll get an alert for every new callback. You can toggle that on a payload specific option here. If we click view config, we can see all the information associated with this payload. So we can see all the different commands that are loaded into the payload itself, what version they are. We can see what HT, what C2 profiles are in it, in this case, HTTP. All the specific parameters that are set in it there. We can see the different payload parameter options that we did. So example, this is Linux with that default. We can see a hash of the payload that we created, MD5 and SHA-1. If you wanna download it from maybe curl or from some other host, Here's the download link that you can use that'll automatically pull it down. You can also click here, the little download button, and it will download the file as well. So we downloaded it. Let's go ahead and go into our downloads folder. Now we have the, the Poseidon payload. So we'll go ahead and make it executable. And now we'll go ahead and kick it off. So now that that's executing, you can see up here, we already got a notification that we have a new callback with the user, uh, what host and what PID. So if we come up here to operational views, our active callbacks, we can see here, we have the host, the IP, the user, um, if there's a domain associated with it, the last check-in, this is Linux um, x64, the payload description that we said, auto gets populated here. And you can see here the little icon for the agent so you know what kind of agent it is. So if you want to interact, you can just click the little keyboard number button here. It'll open up this down um, area over here. And just to kind of illustrate that we can interact with this, we'll just do like shell who am I. Uh, nothing OPSEC safe about that, kind of standard. Um, you'll see that it goes through a couple of stages that we'll talk about later whenever we talk about tasking specifically. Waiting for the next check-in to get the response back from it. And you can see here, everything has went through. We have our callback, we created a payload, C2 profile and everything is running. Since we are in debug mode for that C2 profile, we can come back here to the C2 profiles. Here we can see, yep, it is running. We have a drop down. We can either stop it or we can view the standard out standard error. If we click this, we can see all sorts of debug information of the traffic going through that Docker container into Mythic. So um, you can view this whenever you want, pull it down. Every time you do view this, it flushes what data is stored in the Docker container. So if you wanna have this as part of your uh, long living collections, make sure you save this out of here. 